On Tuesday, I think it was, we spent the whole morning talking about 5G development and private 5G networks. We had several sessions throughout the other days as well. And maybe one can get the impression, wow, now with private 5G networks um, becoming more and more real and also hitting the market, maybe we live in a post-wireless era. But that's actually not quite so. 5G will not cover every use case you have in a factory or on the shop floor. Um, specifically, if you have a lot of moving parts, rotating, rotating machines, etc., etc., um, wireless still plays a significant role, and specifically when you talk about IO link wireless. And actually, it's not so much a question of um, 5G or IO link wireless, it's more a question of how do they come together perfectly. So we at least want to use one session throughout these four days to specifically focus on that topic. And actually, it's more than one session. Um, I think the one afterwards will also talk about IO link wireless. So it's time to see um, what's the current status quo when we talk about IO link wireless. Welcome on stage, Gabi Danieli of Cortigo, who will hit off the topic with his presentation. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm uh, Gabby Danielli, Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer at Cortigo. And uh, we are focused on creating and enabling flexible and faster manufacturing solutions. So how do we do this? As mentioned, we do this with the help of IOLink Wireless. We are leveraging and using the IOLink Wireless technology, which is a global standard, in order to create this much more adaptive uh, manufacturing space. <coughs> And in today's presentation, I'll be focusing on how these solutions are created and being more adaptive and enabling applications and solutions that were not possible to do before without this wireless technology in machine and on machine. So let, let's start off uh, in understanding the problem. When we look at the industrial space, the consumer behavior is driving a lot of mass customization on one hand. But on the other hand, what we're seeing is also the need to constantly increase the capacity and the volumes. And in many machines, in many production lines, this is a gap. Either you are pushing to the extent the volume and capacity, or you're pushing to the extent the maximum flexibility. So there's a gap here that needs to be bridged. We need to enable our machines to be much more adaptive without trading off one or the other, without trading off either capacity or flexibility. But in addition to that, we can't just keep on adding machines all over the place. Whenever we want to add more capacity or to support more designs to enable more flexibility or more customization, because as we all know, there's a lack of skilled operators and there's sustainability issues where we need to reduce the footprint. We want to reduce the amount of external equipment and the energy consumed. And we want to reduce the amount of operators that are doing manual intervention with the machines and have the machines to be as self-optimized and self-adaptive as possible. So essentially, what we want to do, we want our machines to do more. They need to be more flexible and faster together. I'll start off actually before I, uh, before I dive in into the um, IOLink wireless uh, technology itself and explain about it, I want to start off with an example. And this example is going to be from the, uh, from the packaging industry. When we're looking at the packaging industry, there's a similar problem here. Okay, the manufacturers, when they want to drive high volumes, they're putting in <coughs> continuous machines. These continuous machines can drive the volumes to the furthest extent. However, if they need to support now on the same machine multiple designs, let's say uh, packages of different shapes, different form factors, different materials, they're facing a problem. They need that machine to be much more flexible. And that's impacting, of course, the high speeds and the volume of the machine. And in that case, they're putting the intermittent machines. The intermittent machines are enabling them to get more flexibility on the machine. However, they're not able to push the capacity and the volume to its furthest extent. That is, in the previous slide that we talked about, that's the trade-off they need to do between flexibility and capacity on the machine, okay? And what we want to do is we want to create an adaptive machine. We want to create a machine that can support multiple designs without manual changeovers, with automatic changeovers. We want the machine to optimize itself to the product form and shape and all that to be done by also driving the highest volume possible. 
So how is this done and how is IOLink Wireless actually, specifically, let's take this packaging industry uh, example doing this. <clears throat> Start off at the bottom. So when we're looking at the bottom, what we're trying to do with IOLink Wireless, we're trying to add much more intelligence and capabilities on the devices at the edge, on the sensors and the actuators. And this is important to mention. When people think about wireless technology today, they mainly think about sensors, temperature sensor, airflow sensor, stuff like that. We're talking about actuators also. How do we control actuators, whether it's valves or servo motors, grippers, vacuum pumps, how do we control them while they're in motion? And again, sticking to that example in the packaging industry, there's a lot of moving pieces. The, the footprint of moving pieces and automation is very big. As an example, <coughs> carousels on filling and, and capping machines, rotary tables, turntables, transport track systems with independent movers, conveying systems. A lot of motion is happening, which is limited by cables. It's not enabling us not only to get sensor data from those moving components, but also to be able to do actions while in motion. I want to make sure that the machine is in constant motion, constantly moving, and constantly doing the actions while in motion. Okay, again, bridging that gap between the machine to be as flexible as possible, but still being at the highest speeds possible. So then we get to IOLink Wireless, the second layer. And IOLink Wireless is a standard, I'll go a bit deeper in a second, that was uh, developed as part as an extension of the IOLink global standard. And it ensures the highest reliability possible. It ensures scalability to support, in some cases, hundreds of devices per work cell or per machine wirelessly. And as I mentioned, it's reliable and its performance enables it to do not just monitoring of sensors, but also controlling the actuators, the sensors, the grippers, the pumps, everything that's moving on the machine. All that is communicated to a wireless master, an IO-Link wireless master. And that master, in addition to communicating with the wireless devices, with multiple wireless devices, is capable of converging between the OT and IT layer communicating both with the PLC, with industrial Ethernet protocols and OPC UA, but also communicating up north to all the enterprise applications and the cloud applications and 5G networks, which will take this data on to some IIoT platforms. And the goal here is actually to enable all data to be collected and not just data where it's possible with cables. And then digging, drilling a bit deeper into the packaging example, Let's look at transport track systems. So there's a lot of independent mover transport track systems. These are systems with shuttles that are moving independently on the, um, on the uh, tracks. And this has a lot of advantage, of course, compared to the old conveying solutions, which it's just one motion for everything. However, the movers themselves, they're not that intelligent. You cannot control a vacuum pump or a gripper on each mover that's moving because you cannot connect cables for communication on those transport track systems. And what are we doing? We're adding external robots, we're adding delta robots, and we're adding equipment in order to do that. That's again, limiting the motion and limiting the speed. By doing this with IOLink Wireless, now we're able to control the grippers. Let's imagine a gripper on the mover, and that gripper can basically be controlled over the air by the PLC, changing and doing the changeover and the setups automatically. Depending on the bottle size, the form factor, the shape of the bottle, it's changing that automatically, okay? So again, we're addressing all these issues that we talked about in the beginning. We're addressing mass customization. We're addressing the, the, the lack of skilled operators because everything now is done automatically via the PLC over the air and sustainability. We're actually reducing the footprint of the machine and we're gaining full adaptivity. <clears throat> so, IOLink Wireless now, this is how it's enabled. As I mentioned, IOLink Wireless is a global standard. Um, it's part, it's an extension of the IOLink, the well-known IOLink standard. It offers a latency of five milliseconds, a reliability, which is actually literally one million times more reliable than conventional wireless solutions like Wi-Fi or Zigbee or Bluetooth or UHF solutions. We measure the reliability with the packet error rate. So just a bit technical here, the packet error rate, for example, with IOLink Wireless, it is 10 at the power of minus nine compared to 10 at the power of minus three with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or Zigbee. So that pretty much gives us cable grade reliability for IOLink Wireless. 
and it's scalable. This is not just one-to-one -one or one-to-two devices. This is one-to-many devices that can be controlled in motion and again, both sensors and actuators. In addition, some other attributes of IOLink Wireless, it's very immune to noise. It has uh, adaptive frequency hopping mechanisms where every sub-cycle it actually hops to a different cycle. It uses modulation, uh, modulation scheme, unlike Wi-Fi actually, that's very immune uh, to noise and very re uh, resilient. It can operate in very extreme environments and I'll show you another example in just a second. Um, and it coexists with other, uh, with other networks. So if we look at the factory today, what we're seeing is that IO-Link Wireless can actually be applied, of course, not just in packaging, it can be applied in automotive, food and beverage, pharma, metalworks, and many other um, industries. Um, we talked about transport track systems. Uh, for example, on the upper right-hand corner, robots and collaborative robots. Today, you have the wires running along the robotic arms. They're limiting the flexibility of the robots with IO-Link Wireless. You can actually control the grippers, vacuum pumps, or whatever you have on the end of arm without the need for cables and also enable easy changeovers uh, of tools on the robotic arms. Rotary tables, carousels, again, everything that's moving, high speed motion, high performance, that you wanna be able to add more intelligence and more actions that can be done in motion. This is where IOLink Wireless essentially shines. And the last example here on the um, lower right hand corner is intelligent machine tooling, okay? And this is the example that I wanna summarize the session with. When we're looking at CNC machines or drilling machines, milling machines, one of the problems that the manufacturers and the machine builders are facing is that today, they cannot actually monitor or collect data <clears throat> from the tooling point. The tooling point or the clamping point, data cannot be collected there. And what is the reason for that? The reason for that is that because these machines are rotating very rapidly, sometimes 6,000 rounds per minute. The conditions are very hard inside a CNC machine, a lot of lubricant and pieces flying in the closed machine. And in addition, the design needs to be uh, very accurate in terms of being uh, low power. The design is very challenging in a sense that it needs to fit inside the tool itself, inside the clamping piece or the jaw um, that's, uh, that's connected to the, uh, to the machine. And why is it important to collect this data at the clamping point? Because that is the most precise point to collect the data. Whether I'm collecting data on force or vibration or temperature, I want it to be done at the clamping point and I want that data to be collected while machining, while the machine is operating at all times. So, uh, what do we want to do? We want to gain more precision and we want the machine to self-optimize itself. What we were talking about, how do we create the machine to be adaptive and flexible? And by enabling the measurement at the tooling point, we're now able to get ultimate uh, flexibility of the setup. The uh, setup is much more precise with more precise data. We can get part confirmation validation on the tooling point itself and on the clamping point. And also the capacity itself can be optimal by enabling machine tuning that's based on the data that I'm collecting. So feedback from the PLC back to the machine now based on the very precise data that I was getting. How is this done? What you can see in this example, you can see a CNC machine in this example with a chuck. The chuck has three jaws on it. The goal is to be able to measure the vibration, the force, and the temperature at the point where the, the, the jaw ends, where it's holding the actual workpiece, okay? And what you can see here on the right-hand side is actually an integration of IO-Link wireless components inside the jaw. So this is an example of how resilient and robust this protocol is, and basically doing things that were not possible uh, to do before. So it's embedded inside the steel jaw on a CNC machine, rotating at 6,000 rounds per minute and transmitting the signals for vibration, force, and temperature. And then, as mentioned before, that data goes up to the, to the wireless master. The wireless master can communicate both with the PLC and at the IT level. With the PLC to get that self-healing or optimization for the machine and get that feedback from the PLC and back to the CNC machine and up north for further uh, business intelligence, data analytics, traceability, and uh, documentation. <clears throat> so, to summarize this, what we're seeing here is that IOLink Wireless is actually 
a, an integral part of this digital transformation that's happening um, on machines. We're enabling machines actually, as mentioned, to do things that were not possible before. Machines can be much more flexible, much more independent, and essentially just enabling the machines to do more rather than adding more and more machines. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Gabi, are there any questions in the audience? Just raise your hand. Perfect. We have a question. The microphone will be with you in a second. Thank you. My question is, what are limitations of this? So in terms of range, how long does it work or skill sheets in between or anything else? Yeah. So the, uh, the standard defines a very uh, the strict specification around this because it's a deterministic protocol. And at peak performance, meaning let's say five milliseconds low latency and the very high reliability of the packet error rate that I mentioned, the range is 20 meters radius, okay? If you're trading off the latency, for example, 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, you can actually get to higher ranges, similar to Wi-Fi, like 60, 80, 100 meters. Uh, but again, depends on the application, peak performance, 20 meters range. No need for line of sight. As I mentioned, it's very resilient, very robust, so you don't need to have any line of sight. You can place it anywhere under the machine, in the machine. More questions? Oh, there's one here in the back. <coughs> Thanks a lot. Um, are we talking about a mesh, uh, meshed uh, network, or is it one gateway which talks to sensors each? No, it's, it's not a mesh network, so it's one master per the amount of devices that it supports, and of course you can have multiple masters that can coexist in a certain area. The masters can be daisy chains in that sense and then connected to a single PLC, but at this point the standard does not define a mesh for the masters. And if I have this um, yeah, chaining, do I increase the range with that? Or no. no, each master operates uh, separately. Um, and again, getting back to the deterministic nature of this standard, it's very strict, uh, even up to the level where it's defining how many radios okay, can support certain amount of devices. So if you have a radio on your device, it can support up to eight devices. If you have another radio, it can support another eight. It's not like uh, you can just you know, join the party with anything you want. Uh, so, and that's what enables it to have this very high performance. All right, thanks. All right, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your time, Gabi. Thank and you. if there's more need for discussion, make sure to talk to him directly. Thanks a lot. Thank you.